Now what I'm going to be showing you this evening is the Osprey gas piston system 416 installed in a 2 inch outside diameter free float 2 piece aluminum handguard. It's got a separate nut from the tube itself. Now where I got my nut assembly and handguard assembly is from Model 1 Sales. They're out of Texas. So I'm going to be referencing this particular unit because that's what I'm using. And it was one of the least expensive and best quality that I can find. It looks to be uh, the same as the DPMS model. Maybe they're the manufacturer. I don't know. I didn't check. Um, but what we're going to start with here is the nut needs to be machined from its current state of about almost seven eighths of an inches thick down to three quarters of an inch. Now this includes from the back side of the nut right here to the front side of the nut right here. And this leaves about six hundred thousandths from the shoulder to the back side of the nut. Now the reason I do that is because the Osprey gas system has to have um, a backstop for when the piston assembly moves for, uh, rearward during opening the bolt carrier assembly it uses that nut for a backstop to stop so that it doesn't over travel. Now I was told that one of the government military organizations tried to do this with an aluminum tube and nut assembly like I did but they only had about a 300 cycle rate usable lifespan before the uh, the operating rod started to deform the aluminum nut and so I looked at that and I considered that you know after someone paying this much for a system uh, they're probably not going to want to go out and spend you know three three hundred and fifty dollars for a special uh, free float tube assembly um, because then you're you know you're starting to push it into what you could get a you know a complete rifle or at least a complete upper for so to do this and I'm keeping in mind that most free float owners uh, they're doing this for accuracy they're doing it to make the shots count at you know one two three four five six hundred yards and they're not just standing in front of a target 25 yards away seeing how many rounds they can throw at it so that's why I'm doing this for those people um, so to make a long story short here let's get into it from the shoulder of this particular barrel a handguard and nut assembly there's six hundred thousandths from the shoulder to the back side now right here what you see is three stainless steel washers these stainless steel washers are number number eight screw inside diameter and they have an outside diameter of three eighths three point seven five um, I mean uh, point three seven five point three eighty and they slide continually on this operating rod as the system is moving back and forth and they act like an accordion they act like uh, oh anybody's seen the, on the front forks of a dirt bike the rubber protectors they act like an accordion now if you can see this and you can watch this watch what happens this is perfectly level so when I slide this back and forth real fast 
pretend like it's cycling, the washers always rebound from the base of the nut and always go back into that neutral position. Now they do this even when the barrel is pointed up and there's obviously no problem when it's pointed down. But I, I'm hoping you can see this because every time you cycle it they bounce off the nut and they always come back to that accordion style and therefore this particular rifle and nut assembly right here has had about 400 rounds put through it with this Osprey system and eventually what happens is enough carbon comes through here back pressure that all you can see on the back side of this aluminum nut right here is just a discoloration and a very slight mark to know that it was even there and when you look at the washers that I took off it they are extremely well they're extremely well um, the wear there is no wear and the discoloration of the black oxide treatment wearing off these stainless steel washers it was even and precise so apparently what couldn't be accomplished on that aluminum nut these washers take care of now I also tried a 500 degree silicon uh, o-ring but it wasn't the temperature that killed it it was the constant hammering and it was just mainly by accident that I found that the washers took care of it by themselves so I could have disassembled this and assembled it for you but you've all seen that before I could go out and fire this for you you've all seen that before all I can tell you is with the suppressors that I use uh, they are very effective and they're very restrictive so when I installed the Osprey system uh, what I found out is to my utter amazement is how much gas pressure actually goes back through the gas tube and through the bolt carrier and is ejected out the side now I can only imagine as you people can how much gets emptied into the upper receiver once the bolt carrier disengages the gas tube but there's so much gas pressure going back there it actually changed the tone of the bullet exiting the suppressor uh, and it was amazing to me because I've been developing these suppressors for pretty much three years uh, gone through a lot um, and it just amazed me to no end now what I will add because this is a very restrictive suppressor that I'm using on a 16 inch 1 and 8 stainless steel barrel I had to use uh, the the tub system um, weight system in the back of the bolt carrier and I used the the insert obviously and I used the uh, tungsten carbide insert inside the insert sleeve I use a MGI buffer which is over I think it's 7.1 ounces and you can either use the MGI 2x spring or you can use the uh, the tub chrome silicone flat wound spring either one seemed to be the same I didn't notice anything that I could calculate different between the two. 